Mmm, the creamy dream look. Hey, what's up guys? What if you want this creamy dream look for a flashback sequence or for some interesting lens effects without having to bumble around with screw in lens filters? These are the five different lens effects to create a professional cinema or dream look inside of Premiere. All right, so I got this shot of a woman walking down the street. We need to get it to a good starting point before we can begin building our five different dream looks. And I'm gonna use Cinema Grade to speed this up, but you can also use the built-in Lumetri color tools. I'm just gonna apply an Alexa Log C to Rec. 709 input LUT to get us to a good starting point and then use the convenient on-screen point and clicking in the viewer to make adjustments to the exposure and contrast. Warm it up a bit and finish with a bump in saturation. That's looking good, so let's now jump to the final grading page to apply a look. I like the Shouse look, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply it, and then finish up with a couple other adjustments to the contrast and exposure. Here's a quick look at the before and after. Nice! We'll hit apply, and now we have the graded version in Premiere ready for our first look, the glow effect. To achieve this look, we're gonna do something a bit different. We're actually gonna reach for the immersive video effect, which is normally used for VR or virtual reality shots. I find that it actually works wonders on 2D images and is great for transitions and adding flair to text animations. So let's apply the VR glow effect. And at first you'll see that nothing happens until we adjust the parameters. Just play around with them until you find what really works for you. I want all the brightest areas of the image to emit a glow, so I'll bring the luma threshold down to 0.70. It looks way too strong, but this lets you see what areas we are affecting. Next, we'll bring the glow radius all the way up to 366. What this is doing is it's feathering the glow so it doesn't have such hard edges. Now we can bring the glow brightness down, in this case, down to about 0.46. If I toggle the effect off and then back on, you can see we're adding a nice dreamy glow effect kind of like a diffusion lens filter. All right, on to number two, lens distortion effect. We'll continue where we left off to create some cool optical effects like you'd see from a damaged lens or with lens whacking. To do that, we'll add the VR chromatic aberrations effect. Right away, you can see the effect is displacing the red, green, and blue channels, but by default, it affects only the center of the image. By enabling fall off invert, we can change it to affect the edges of the image. We in fact don't want the distortion to affect our subject, but the environment surrounding her and with the point of interest parameter, we can change the center of the effect to make sure that it's not affecting her. I'm not liking that the effect is still far from her, so we'll change the fall off distance up to 60, and that gets closer, even affecting parts of her clothing and the coffee cup, but keeping her face clean. An effect like this could be used in a dream sequence or some other cool optical effect. What do you think? Do you like it? I love it. All right, now let's say you want a more subtle creamy effect like you'd get with a Pro Mist filter. We want to soften and brighten the shot, not with a glow, but more like a blooming effect to give it a more cinematic vibe with creamy highlights. We'll delete all the other effects except for Cinema Grade, and while holding Option and dragging on the clip, we'll create a copy of it on top. Then we'll disable the clip on the bottom and add the Luma Key effect to the top clip. We'll use this key to get rid of the darker areas of the image, setting the cutoff value to 50%. How much you do here will depend on the image you're using, so keep that in mind. Then add the Gaussian blur effect and set the blurriness to 50. Now when we enable the bottom clip, we can see the effect. We get this pleasing blooming effect around the edges between the highlights and the darker areas, creating a softer look. If it happens to be too strong for your taste, just go back to the top clip and bring the opacity down. In this case, I think it looks good around 70%. For our fourth effect, the HDR look, we'll keep both clips and delete the other effects except Cinema Grade. To create this look, we'll add the Solarize effect to the top clip. By default, it's set at 50, so let's bring it up to 100 to get a more interesting outcome. Now, you'll want it to be totally desaturated. For that, you can use the black and white effect or the tint effect. Then we'll add the Gaussian blur effect, set it to 46, and make sure to enable repeat edge pixels. 
Finally, go to Opacity and change the blending mode to Overlay. Que bella! This gives us a very graphical vibe to the footage like an old magazine print. It's a little flat, so let's add the brightness and contrast effect to the bottom clip and bring the brightness down. So far, we've looked at lens effects and the sort of dream looks they create, so let's explore color shifting in our fifth and final effect. This time, we'll keep only one copy of the clip and again, leave only cinema grade. Now let's create a solid. You can choose whatever color you like. I'll choose this shade of blue. Then position the solid over the clip, then change the blending mode to hard mix. We don't want the solid to tint our character, just her surroundings. So we'll create a mask around her, invert it, feather the mask, and bring the opacity down. The hard mix is creating very hard edges, so we'll create an adjustment layer and position it on top. We'll create another mask around the subject, feather the mask, invert it, then we'll add the Gaussian blur effect, enable the repeat edge pixels option, and bring the blurriness up to taste. In this case, 47 looks good to me. Finally, we'll add the Lumetri color effect and bring the shadows down in the base correction panel. And that gives us a really cool bluish magenta tint for a really strange dream vibe. While technically this doesn't mimic a lens effect, it's still a really cool effect in creating the dream vibe. And there you have it, five different creamy dream looks that you can create on your own in Premiere. Let me know what you think. Tell me which effect is your favorite. And if you like this grading demo with Cinema Grade, you can find out more about it by visiting the link in the description below. It lets you click and adjust the exposure and color of things right directly in the viewer. It comes with 90 built-in color looks, a convenient batch processing feature where you can copy grades to multiple clips and tons more. It works on M1 Macs and soon coming to Windows. You can get 20% off with coupon code YouTube20 at checkout for a limited time. For more new videos like this, click the subscribe button and then the bell to be notified of our next one. I'll see you in the next video. Let's make cinema quality video.